Hi, I'm Renee Tucci, and today we're going to create a monochromatic design that might just leave you feeling a little bit lucky. Now for today's design, we're going to be building it in a 6 by 6 by 6 glass cube. Now you can see that I have left one of the sides of the cubes unfinished here, so you can see that it's 6 wide by 6 high by 6 deep. Uh, and to embellish the vase, we are actually going to be adding a um, lily grass mat, a woven mat on all four sides. So I've added one to the first three sides. And I'm going to go ahead and make the mat for the last side, and I'm going to show you how I, I'm going to do that. Whenever I create a weave, I think like to do it on a temporary surface that's really easy to work on and something where I can measure out the uh, space or the size of the weave, weave that I want to make. So in this case, I'm doing a 6 by 6 by 6 square. And so I'm just using a clipboard that I had handy, and I've used my friend the painter's tape because it's so uh, easy to remove, temporary, and I've measured off a six by six square so that I know exactly how large I need my weave to be. So when I start, I know when I can stop. Now I've also taken the painter's tape and I've done a big tape donut right across the top of where I'm going to be building my weave and that's actually what's going to keep uh, the weave in place temporarily while I work on it and then I can remove it easily and adhere it to our container. So today I'm working with variegated lily grass as my material to weave with and I really love it because it's incredibly versatile. It's a very hardworking foliage in the industry uh, and not only can you do so many things to it, you can manipulate it in so many ways, um, but because it's variegated, it's got that beautiful striations in the blade itself, which really lend itself to some cool patterns. So we're going to start with uh, the one, one blade at a time. That's how we're going to build this. And as you can see, I want the blades to stick up above the edge of the container, but in a very random fashion. They're not all at the exact same height. I want that um, organic grass feel, if you will. So I'm just going to start with one blade. And when you're working with lily grass, you can tell the difference between the top and the bottom, or the, the, the top side and the underneath. And so you want to make sure you're using the correct side all the way through. Whatever you choose to work with in the beginning, make sure you carry that through. So I would like to show the top of my grass blade. So I'm going to lay it on the very edge of my tape donut here with just about four or five inches of the blade sticking above that tape line. And then I will proceed to lay out the rest of the blades just one right next to the other, as close as I can get them. And with the tips, as I said, being at random heights, some a little bit taller than others, but not too completely vast. Okay, so you can see now that I've got all of my blades running parallel and we've covered the stretch from side to side on our donut piece of tape. I'm going to go ahead and just trim the bottom of these blades so it's a little more user friendly to work with, just using a pair of scissors. I'm going to cut it right at the bottom of my uh, box, my tape box that I made so that everything is already at the length of where I need it to be. So now we're ready to create the actual weave. And when we talk about weaving, weaving is a technique that interlocks materials in a crisscross pattern and 
This type of technique, of course, has been done for many, many, many centuries and is used in lots of different uh, maker styles, of course, tons of baskets and all kinds of things are made with a weaving technique. So it's a really great tried and true classic technique that shows some real thought and vision behind your design. So all I'm going to do now is take more blades of that lily grass and just do an under over pattern throughout the parallel uh, blades. So now I went vertical before, now I'm going to go horizontal and I'm just going to pick one side to start and continue that all the way down. So if I go under on the first blade, then I'm over on the second blade, under, over, under, over, and so on. Now, uh, lily grass is also known throughout the industry as, uh, it can also be called monkey grass. I'm not quite sure why it's called monkey grass. Um, or also by one of its scientific names, uh, liriope. And it's very, very hardy. It also comes in a, an unvariegated variety, uh, which is just straight green. And that's equally as wonderful to work with. I love working with that in lots of different applications. And it can be woven just as nicely. Okay, so once I get my first blade in here, I missed a spot. Under, over, under, over. You get to talking and you mess up your pattern. Okay, so now I've got my first blade running horizontally across. And I'm gonna push it up as tight as I can to that top right underneath the, the tape donut that we've got in there. Now, I want to hold this in place so that it's, it's really um, solid. So what I'm gonna do is take a piece of a U-glue dash. So these are U-glue dashes. They are double-sided adhesive. Um, industrial strength adhesive dashes and so I just want to take a very small piece of one of these dashes and put it underneath each side of my mat here and I'm going to use um, Teflon coated non-stick scissors to cut my dash because otherwise they're so sticky they will stick to your scissors. Now the dash is already small but we need an even smaller size on the dash. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a third of a, of a dash and then I'm going to cut half of that third and one half will go on one side and the other half will go on the other. And like I said, this is just going to hold your blades in place so that you can continue to work and you don't have to worry about them wiggling or wanting to fall out of the weave. Once you get going, everything holds itself into place and it's really easy to quickly move through this. So we'll just lift that first piece and lay it down. Be careful, it's very sticky, it will stick to your fingers. There we go. And then we've got our second piece and we'll lift that blade, the other end, lay the U-glue down and secure. So now our first blade is really in there. It's not going to fall apart. Now I'm going to do that technique probably every five or six blades as I go down. So I might do that two more times as I move down. Every few blades I'll lock it in place with the U-glue dash just to make sure my mechanics are solid. So now I'll just continue to build my mat and weave away. Okay, so we have finished our woven lily grass mat. As you can see here, I've got vertical and horizontal pieces, crisscrossing, interweaving, and creating this beautiful pattern. I'm gonna go ahead and trim the sides. I'm happy with the top because it coordinates with our organic, natural feel of the other three that we've made. But I'm gonna go ahead and just trim the sides so that we've got a flush edge to work with. And I find it's easy, easier to do this while the mat is still 
temporarily on hold. Everything stays right where I want it. Now it's time to release it from our, our, card, our uh, clipboard. So I'm just gonna gently pull the mat across the painter's tape. You could certainly do this with a U-glue strip as well. You do not have to use painter's tape, but there we go. Here's our mat. So let's move ahead with uh, attaching it to our vase. We've got this blank side of the cube and that's what we're gonna put it on. So here I have U-glue strips. Now this is just like the dashes that I just used, the smaller pieces, except these are much bigger, they're longer. So what I'm gonna do is take a strip, peel off one side, which exposes part of the sticky adhesive, and then I'm actually going to peel off the other side. Now I could just stick it directly to the vase and then remove the other piece, but I want to alter this strip a little bit because you can actually take this stick the sticky and uh, stretch it so that it completely covers the vase. So now I've got some of that really strong adhesive going side to side here. And then you can go ahead and do the same thing with the second one. Okay, and now that we have our U-glue and our, our sticky adhesive on our vase, we're just gonna take our mat, center it where we want it, and press it down. And just like that, we have beautifully enhanced this otherwise fairly ordinary modern vessel. Let's go ahead and add some water and get ready to add some flowers. Now before we add our flowers, I just want to make mention that at the time of this filming, we are very close to St. Patrick's Day. And that's the reason behind my color tones that I chose for today and also some of the flowers and accents that I've chosen. And you'll see those in a moment. Now, I want a very, as I mentioned, organic, natural feeling design to come out of our grasses to really enhance this um, beautiful pattern that we've already created. So I'm gonna take some plumosa and I'm going to cut it and I'm gonna add this in first. I'm gonna go ahead and clip off anything that's lower on the stem because I really just want the top part. We never want any uh, flowers to go into our vase. So we'll just trim this off and add this in. And I'm going to have it sort of stick through the grasses. And I'm gonna add four or five pieces like this, interlocking them as I add each one into the next. And that's gonna create sort of a natural grid for the rest of my flowers to work into. So here we have the next piece. I've cleaned off that stem. And I'm going to interlock it into the lateral of my first stem. And I'll continue to do that until I have a nice base set up here for my traditional flowers to be added into. So now I've got a beautiful base to work from here and I'm gonna feed all of my blooms right into this plumosa base that I've got going. Let's start with some chrysanthemums. I've got some traditional cushion chrysanthemums here and they've got lots of great laterals and a lateral is any side shoot that's coming off the main stem. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel off any lower leaves that we don't need or uh, lower stems that I think will uh, muck up my center. And I'm gonna go ahead and start adding this in and look at that first stem in, it's staying exactly where I put it because I've got this great base. So very similar to how I added the plumosa, from now on each stem of chrysanthemum that I add, I'm gonna make sure that I'm locking it into uh, the plumosa or the chrysanthemum laterals from my previous stem. And as I do this, I just wanna make sure that all of those lily bl grass blades are, are sticking upright. So as I go around, I'll make sure to pull those out. I want the flowers to kind of be poking through the grass. Okay, so now I've got a great base of the smaller chrysanthemums. Let's go ahead and add some larger chrysanthemums.
So these are called uh, Dispuds or Cremone Mums. And same technique here, we're gonna remove the le leaves that are on the stems. And we're gonna work these larger heads between where we have the smaller chrysanthemums. Next up, we're gonna add in some Bells of Ireland. Now this is not only uh, accentuating our color palette, the green and white, but it's also a nod to our Irish friends. As I mentioned, this is uh, an homage to St. Patrick's Day from me. So I'm gonna go ahead and add these in throughout. Now they are, of course, a line flower. So when you add these in, you wanna make sure that the uh, placement of them really helps to direct the eye through the design. So strategic placement of them is really important. Uh, also of note is the fact that Bells of Ireland are a geotropic flower, and that means they grow against gravity. So gravity would normally keep us down and maybe want the heads to be sort of bending as they are now, but over the next few days, they will go uh, grow actually against gravity and they will straighten up. So you wanna make sure you anticipate that when you place the Bells of Ireland throughout the design. Next up, we have one more focal flower to add in and that's going to be these ranunculus. They are just so incredibly beautiful. They love the colder weather and uh, we are still in that cold weather snap right now. So they're looking gorgeous. And I'm gonna add these into the arrangement wherever there's sort of a gap and they can really be featured. To help accentuate the line in addition to the Bells of Ireland, I'm also gonna add in a quintessential spring branch and that's our Pussy Willow here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove these lower catkins, but I'm going to save them because they can be handy in a future project. They're really wonderful to uh, dress up a container. If you were to glue them or you glue them onto a container, they can make a really beautiful pattern or they can be used in uh, wearable flowers like necklaces and earrings and things like that. So you can have a lot of fun with these little catkins from the Pussy Willow. One last item to add to our St. Patrick's Day design and that's going to be the addition of these potatoes. So of course Ireland is known for its potato bounty uh, but I also love the addition of them because it enhances the brown tone of the pussy willow branch that we added in there. So it really marries the color palette and bridges everything together. I've got some fingerling potatoes here so there are a few different shades of brown which makes it a little bit more exciting and I've got some bamboo skewers and so what I'm going to do is take the skewer add it into my potato and then just lower them into my design. Now I'm going to add these in in clusters so I might do three or four here and then two or three over here. Just find pockets within the arrangement where you could use a real punch of something special and add in a few potatoes. Now I should note the reason I'm using bamboo skewers for this not only is because they've got that great pre-made point that's going to make your skewering very easily easy but also because when you work with a wood stick and you add it into a, a vase or some flower foam, the wood expands when it gets wet and that really locks it into the potato or the orange or the lemon or whatever it is that you're adding into your design. Working with a wood stick or skewer will make sure everything locks into place. Okay, and now you have our finished St. Patrick's Day design, monochromatic with the green and white tones, with a punch of creativity utilizing the potatoes skewered onto a wooden stick. I hope you enjoy practicing the weave. It can be very calm and medita meditative, uh, but it also adds beautiful creative flair to your designs. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned a tip or technique. Have a great day.